The book is about the case of a group of seminarians and a priest who were kidnapped in Argentina in 1976. And like the case is like the tree. And then from the tree, I go to the forest. So I, I did a, a research on, on the case itself. Um, and then after that, I analyze um, the political uh, violence and state terrorism in Argentina. The case itself is um, it's like a movie almost. It's um, a tragic one, but there was a group of seminarians living in Córdoba, second, Argentina's second largest city. Um, they were uh, having a study at, at a seminar nearby the house where they were living. A mob from the uh, police state broke into the house. Uh, destroy the house, uh, kidnap them, but left in the house one a nun who was visiting them by by chance that day, uh, John McCarthy, an American nun. The priest who was in charge of the seminarian was an American uh, priest, J James uh, James Weeks from uh, Clinton, Massachusetts, and the the case develops that the people were uh, kidnapped, disappear for a couple of days. But because of this priest who was from the United States, the State Department and his family was linked to the uh, to the Democratic Party. That was August 76. So the uh, presidential campaign from Jimmy Carthy have started here. Um, people were concerned about the violations of human rights in, in Chile. Because of that, there was a, a good um, room in the United States to pressure. I mean, the, for the public opinion of the United States to pressure its government saying, okay, we should do something because of, for this priest. So the priest was expelled from Argentina, expelled from Argentina after a week of being kidnapped. And once he came here, he started the campaign to free uh, the rest of the seminarians. Joan McCarthy, the nun who was in Argentina, she was left, she could run away. It's, she did a, a, a very difficult trip from Argentina to Uruguay, to Bolivia, to Ecuador, to Miami, and then to Washington finally. But then she joined uh, James, or Santiago, as he's known in Argentina. And both of them were advocating, uh, advocating for the seminarians. While the seminarians were tortured, uh, were in the concentration camp in Argentina, they were tortured by other people who also claimed to be Catholic. So at the torture chamber, to some extent, the debate was about the true way, the real way of being a Catholic. So the book is about that, that case, but also I go uh, trying to explore um, what was going on in Argentina in those days and how the Catholic Church reacted, different social, Catholic social actors reacted towards uh, state terrorism in those days. The Dirty War was uh, a moment in Argentinian history in the 1970s. Um, when the state, the government was taken over by the military, so the, the military take, uh, took over the government, and they started a persecution against the political opposition. The, and that was something that happened in Latin America at the same time, uh, beginning with Chile and Uruguay. Perhaps Chile with Pinochet is the most well-known case uh, in the United States. Among other things, because the, the, the U.S. government was very involved in the coup d'etat in Chile, uh, helping the military to take over the, the, uh, the power, but also because in 1976, one of the former Chilean ministers, uh, one guy who was part of the Salvador Allende, the communist president in Chile, who was elected, um, Letelier, this man was killed in Washington, D.C. A, a, a car bomb exploded and killed him, uh, killed him and his um, helper, who was an American person. So after that bomb exploded at Washington, D.C., people started to think about dirty war and what was going on in Latin America. Ecuador and Nicaragua was later, was in the uh, early 80s, and Argentina was... 1976, uh, the dictatorship, to till 1983. The government took over the power, persecuted the political opposition. The persecution was uh, unlawful. It was and they hiding in the shade. And they took the people from their places, put them in clandestine detention centers, and in most of the cases they were killed. There are some figures that I, I think the reliable sources said that 15,000 people were killed in Argentina in those days. I'm a sociologist, sociologist of religion, but also a Jesuit priest. 
Um, and as a priest, I wanted to know how did people react towards violence. And I, I guess that for me, the, the, the most important question was, how could some people who were honest and good persons didn't react against violations of human rights uh, with much more, uh, in a committed way, like with much more decision, you know? Um, so I, that, to some extent, that was my, my personal quest uh, because I, I, I said to myself, well, uh, what are the things that now, today, I am missing? What are the things that I cannot see today that are unfair and unjust? I'm not reacting as I should. Um, so with that quest, which was much more like a personal thing, I started to dig into the history of the country, what was going on in Argentina in those days. Um, and it was very important for me to place uh, the Catholic Church, the Catholic people, among other institutions. Mm, so it wasn't something, it's not fair and it, it, it wasn't good to analyze the church by, by itself, but to locate the institution among another institutions in the Argentinian uh, realm in those years. Uh, but I guess that for me, the, the, the most important thing was why didn't um, red lights turn on when people were, were being killed in Argentina in those years. I started to read about the topic, um, like in general, uh, readings, always trying to connect what was going on among the Catholic people, but also with other institutions. Um, I attended a conference in La Habana, Cuba uh, in, in 2007, and one guy there was started to talk like informally and he was Alejandro Dausa, one of the seminarians who were kidnapped. I knew about the case, but I didn't knew I didn't know the names. Um, so th that talk with Alejandro started a, a kind of snowballing process where he put me in contact with other people. And I, at the beginning, let's say that I started out of curiosity, but then I realized, no, I have a case here. Like, I mean, I, I know people, I have the story, the story hasn't been written yet. Uh, this is the first book about the case. So I said, okay, I, I, I want to do that. I want, I want to work on that. Another decision was to, to talk to the people. I, I didn't want to do something about the church as an institution, but about the Catholics uh, personally. I wanted to know what was going on on the ground. So I interviewed 24 persons, the five or six who were directly involved in the case, but then other people um, who were related to the situation. I interview uh, pe people here in the United States, like Cardinal Sean O'Malley, who was a priest at Washington um, DC Cathedral in those years, and he helped some of the exilees coming from Argentina. I interview other people just to have a kind of historical context, and I did some research on documents. Um, but the main point was to interview the, the persons who were um, kidnapped. The point about the documents was that sometimes the torturers uh, don't want to talk. So how do you access them? And to some extent, the official documents of Argentina in those years reproduce the point of view of the military people. Um, so that was the way of, of dealing with that. I even did some uh, research on the archives here at BC. Um, Bob Drynan was a Jesuit who was a congressman of Massachusetts in 19, between 1970 and 1980. He visited Argentina in 1976 as member of the Commission of Amnesty International. That was the first international audit that the military government had. And he interviewed many people in Argentina in those years. So his archives are here. Uh, so I did some research even here at Boston College. So the seminarians were five, four Argentinians and one Chilean. I couldn't get the Chilean one. I don't know what happened with him. And one of the guys from Argentina didn't answer my emails or phone calls. So I interviewed three of them. Um, two of them were ordained priests and one left priesthood after that. So we have one priest working in Argentina. This ma man who left priesthood is working in social movements in Bolivia now. And the other guy who never got ordained, he just left after coming to the exile in the United States. He got married and had two children and still working in, in Cordoba. Joan McCarthy, the nun, um, 
G was working in Argentina for many, many years. She came back to Argentina and was working in northwestern Argentina in a very uh, impoverished area of the country, uh, trying to write the life of four people who were killed by the military government. Um, it's called like a positio. So it's, it's like the biography of the guys in order to be canonized by the church. So she was working on that. Bishop Angelelli, uh, Wenceslao Pedernera, and Longueville and Murias, two other priests who were killed in those years. Santiago Weeks, or I mean, Santiago is the name that they give him in, in, in Spanish in Argentina. James Weeks uh, came back uh, to Argentina after that, worked there for a long, long time. Two years ago, he came back to the United States uh, just to take care of his health, and he was living at the um, uh, Our Lady of La Salette Congregation Nursing Home, which is in West Hartford, Connecticut. He and John passed away last year. John passed away perhaps a year ago. John McCarthy and James passed away in, in March and kind of sad because neither of them could see the book in English. I mean, they, they got the book in Spanish, but uh, James mainly, I, I, I talked to him on the phone many times. I visited him and he was so anxious about the book in English, but uh, he couldn't get to make, he didn't make to see it. Yeah. The topic of the Dirty War is still a very uh, difficult topic in my country. And even the, the, how do you name it? Like, Dirty War in English makes sense in the sense that it's a government against its own people. In Spanish, when you translate that to Guerra Sucia, it's more the emphasis on the collateral damage. Uh, so many people said, okay, it was a Dirty War, so there were some collateral damage. And other people said, no, 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 no. You, you, you weren't after those people. It, it wasn't collateral damage. So even the name of, of after 30 years, the way you name it, it it's still a problem in, in Argentina. Um, it's, it's a problem for the society in general in Argentina. Um, we have been doing progress on that. Um, after the military um, administration finished, the first democratic government did the Never Again report um, a year after that. And I think it was the first Never Again report in, in Latin America. And, and the name was the, the, the names of the other reports were taken after this one. Um, the military presidents and the military juntas were put in trial and, and they were condemned by justice. Um, and now, and, and then there was a kind of, of, of um, cool down of the process um, because some people in the country was upset about that. So for a couple of years, there were no uh, people persecuted in, in the courts. Um, Ten years ago, the government said, okay, we should go after everyone who was responsible, not just the, the big fish, the, the, the big cats, but also for the other ones. And a, a number of trials uh, started in, in Argentina. For some people, that has been very important. I, uh, I myself went to a court and, and, and submitted testimony about my, the case that I've studied because the seminarians were uh, uh, persecuting the military in, in, in court. Uh, but for some people in Argentina, it's, it's a problem. They say that, okay, we should uh, stop the thing, we should uh, overcome the process and whatever. I think that the church hasn't been, as, as an institution, hasn't been as um, brave and acknowledging, and it should. However, again, if you look at other social actors, perhaps the church is the only one who has asked for forgiveness. It was short, it was a bad, it was uh, out of time asking for forgiveness, but there was something. Political parties haven't said anything. Big media haven't say anything. So it's something that is not solved, I would say. For that reason, in, in Spanish, my book is much more a popular book. I, I didn't do an academic book because I say, okay, I, I want the book to be read uh, and I want the book to reach a broader audience, audience than just um, a, a group of scholars, you know. The book is not about Pope Francis and I didn't... I think I mentioned him occasionally a couple of times because at the same time that the Lasalettes were kidnapped, almost simultaneously, a, a group of Jesuits, two Jesuits were kidnapped and released at the same time. Um, so the book is not about him or the case of the Jesuits. However, I 
paint and I explore, I, I paint a landscape and explore what was going on in Argentina in those years. And because it's such a, fun, a fundamental moment of the country history, I think it would help the readers to understand the context where the Pope uh, comes from. It's, it's not about him, but it's about the context. You will have a, a picture of uh, other social actors and mainly what was going on on the church, what was going on on the Catholic world, um, what were people saying for and against, what were people doing and that. So it would be easier for the reader to place Pope Francis in that context, I think. 